Wine lover Monty Walden has upped sticks and moved to a stunning area of rural southwest France to live out a dream. Uh, hang on, anchovies, peppers and eggs, that's never going to yeah, work. Well. Absolutely superb. But Monty's ambition is to produce 6,000 bottles of quaffable red wine that will put the French to shame. Just growing some grapes may seem simple, but really isn't. You know, there's all sorts that can go wrong. As well as wine, he aims to stock his larder with homegrown fruit and veg. OK. Yeah. And he's about to start renovating an old shack up in the vineyard. But his plan to train up Lindsay, a complete novice, into a vineyard assistant has backfired. And unfortunately, can every job sort of taking twice as long. So now you're getting into it, hasn't I just think I'm going to have to have a word with her. I want you to only come back yeah. if you're going to pull your weight. Mm. This week, Monty gets the answer to the question, will Lindsay ever return? It's April in the Pyrenees. Charming. The warm weather marks the start of the tourist season. People are flocking to the region for some of its rural charm and cuisine extraordinaire. Blimey, you've got eight types of mustard, yeah? It's a welcome change for our man Monty, who's recently had to put up with gale force winds, blizzards, and the unreliability of his French wheels. <laughs> to make matters worse, he's been battling on alone for the last month after his bust-up with his assistant, Lindsay. I had a sort of period of reflection after the last time I saw Lindsay, and, um, you know, I was pretty strong, a bit too hard, I think, with her. Um, but I do want her to come back. After realising he'd overstepped the mark, Monty's been waiting for news on whether Lindsay will return or not. But back in Blighty, Lindsay has found other work while she agonises over her future with Monty. Today, she's made a decision. I am going to go back and I'm going to prove to him that I can do it. And I will put my 110% into it this time rather than probably 70%. You know, I wasn't really trying very hard and I was probably a little bit, I can't be bothered, because it's the outdoor life isn't really sort of what I've been used to. And I didn't really like it, if I'm honest, so I suppose I didn't give him my best. You know, I'm just not going to let him get the best of me anyway. Monty's persuaded Lindsay back just in time so he can fulfill a long-standing business trip to Germany. This means leaving Lindsay in sole charge of the vineyard. The only thing that worries me about going away is I'm going to leave Lindsay with a really big list of things to do, and I want to see her really getting stuck in. Monty will be away for the next three days. The following day, words got round the village that Lindsay is back. Monty is uncontactable while he's away. Instructions from the boss man. So he's left a detailed list of jobs. Lindsay's challenge is to carry out Monty's instructions to the letter. Otherwise, she faces le chop. Monty's arrived in Germany's biggest privately owned winery. It's over 400 years old and a tad unusual. Like our man Monty, they use planetary and lunar cycles to produce their wine. Monty's mission is to see how these uber-clever German chappies manage to do the biodynamic thing on such a large scale. This is like a hundred times bigger than my vineyard. Uh, and they have all the equipment that I just don't have. But this is kind of what I aspire to. Um, but it's going to take time for me to get anywhere near something like this. 
Monty's hoping to unearth some tips that he can use to build up his own business. Back in France, Lindsay has started working through Monty's long list of jobs. She's been left completely in charge. I've just got to put on my back. Her challenge is to make up a biodynamic spray using fresh cow manure she mixed by hand a month ago, which has been maturing in the bottom of a barrel. Monty actually said that when this came out, that it would have an earthy smell to it. And it hasn't. It absolutely smells disgusting. And I don't think that's right. According to this, that's what it's supposed to look like. It doesn't look like that that I've got in the pot. But really, that doesn't tell me anything apart from the colour it should be. The spray has to be applied according to the correct lunar cycle, which ends tomorrow. She doesn't have time to delay. Back in Germany, Monty's like a kid in a sweet shop. That's quite nice, huh? You can see a little bit of manure. That was a grape. He's realised that his own little French biodynamic wine could easily make him a fortune if he thinks big. This is a great example when people say, oh, no, biodynamics, it's not economically viable. This proves the point that it is completely viable. And not only viable, but critically successful. This winery is now getting um, really good reviews from the press and from consumers. And, and biodynamics plays a big part in that. So coming here kind of recharges my batteries almost. Um, and it kind of motivates me that my own little project, I'm definitely on the right track with my own little project. Hold your horses, Monty. I've been in a bit of a predicament today because I'm not sure that the manure even looks right, but, you know, not doing this before, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really know. In his mind, if this treatment here will just improve the earth on the vineyard, which he thinks will go to make a, a better wine, but whether that's the case remains to be seen. As well as the vineyard, Lindsay has to take responsibility for tending their allotment. It's really changed since I uh, was last here. It actually looks quite good, I've got to say. It doesn't take long before she settles into a new way of life. I was never really an outdoors person. And I've really started to like being outdoors now. And we work lots of hours in the vineyard, you know, and um, I actually don't mind. The attractions of city life, it seems, are now a distant memory. Unlike Veronica's French lessons. Meat. Now, this is, this is really crucial if you order a steak. You want your meat rare. It's more alive on your plate, isn't well, it? Well, it's more... Yeah, exactly. Good yeah. day. Get it up and running again. <laughs> rare is saignant, because saignant means bloody. A point would be medium. Well done hmm. is bien cuit. So I would say entre a point et bien cuit. On a fromage, s'il vous plaît. Oui. At the end of a hard week, Lindsay's conversion to rural living reaches its climax. She makes the ultimate sacrifice, and it's her false nails that get le chop. Ta-da! They're off. The next day, Monty is back and is desperate to find out what's been happening while Lindsay has been left in charge. Hello. Hello. Anybody home? Yes, I am. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, Harry. So, no news is good news, I presume? Well, I've got some news for you, but I think... What, you're know. pregnant? No. Getting married? <laughs> no. You're leaving? No. You speak fluent French? No. <laughs> I mean, the main thing is, um... Uh, 
was the bowel compost. Was how was that? Right. Um, well, I took the lid off. It just smelled awful. Mm -hmm. And I brought some down the back home with me to show you. Okay. Let me go and get it. You said, didn't you, that when you opened it uh, and we got it out, that the sm it'd smell lovely and mm -hmm. earthy and it'd be. To see, yeah. yeah. And there'd be creatures in it and worms right. and. There's nothing wrong with that. Are you sure? Yeah, 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 there's nothing wrong with that. That's good. All right then. That's well, I, I but you did spray it though, yeah? Well, I wasn't sure, but then I just thought, well, I'll do it anyway because it can't do any harm putting it on. So I did, I went. Hey, Lens. I'm impressed. So there you go, I took the initiative. Can't do any harm, that's exactly what I want to hear. Yeah. The other bit of news is. You noticed? My God, you're taking your nails off. It's a big transformation, isn't it? I'm used to city life, not walking around in wellies and. <laughs> I can't believe it. Well, there's no point having those on when I'm doing what I'm doing, is there? Can you just repeat that? I said, there's no point in having those on when I'm doing what I'm doing. It was a long time coming, but at last, Lindsay has kicked the city girl into touch. With the vineyard under control, there's now time for Lindsay to enjoy a bit of La Belle France. Donkey sausage? I'm not playing on donkey sausage. Why not? A bit fatty. Probably fat. Yeah, maybe. Oh, pay at the end, then, she's saying, yeah? It's <laughs> a good friend. Oh. This is more like it. Exactly how Lindsay envisaged her life in France. Well, thanks for bringing me out today. Um, I appreciate it. Well, you did a very good job when I was away. I'd be happy for you to go away again and fill, you know... <laughs> for the rest of the year, but... <laughs> yeah, leave me to run it. <laughs> oh, you did very well. Their working relationship may well be on track. But Monty discovers his finances are about to derail. In the Pyrenees, spring has well and truly sprung. Lindsay has worked hard while Monty's been away. She's determined to prove that she has the makings of a good vineyard assistant. Impressed with the results, Monty's taking her on a culinary treat as a thank you. Claudie's restaurant is renowned in the area. She cooks and serves meals to the locals in her own kitchen. So this region is absolutely famous for its, its anchovies. And she gets these from a, um, a friend of hers who's a fisherman. Well, I think it looks really good. And Some of the wines here will be up to about 80 years old, probably. <laughs> Really, really good. Well, Absolutely superb. Monty's own plans for homegrown fruit and veg are progressing very well. He's been busy putting the finishing touches to his new chicken run. That'll just hold it whilst I... That's enough. That'll just hold Up till now, fresh eggs were bought daily from the chicken lady in the village. Yeah. This one's looking at me, Frenny. <laughs> I can't stand birds that flap. <laughs> I have been this close to a hen. Today, Monty's taking delivery of his own chickens. Four hens and a cock. Oh. Hey, big boy. Right, are you ready to roll? a bit frightened, don't you? Well, we've got to get them out, because it's a very hot pickup. Yeah, yeah, ooh. Come on, Come on. The only chickens Lindsay has ever handled in the past have all been oven-ready. Oh, the crap in the pocket. Oh. All right. Then you've got, to, you've got to pick them up. Oh. Top, man. What do I have to do? Just don't take you? it by the feet. Hold her back away from... Hold her back to you. Like that, then? No, let's just take it. I'm scared. That's right. Ooh. Oh, his feet are warm. Oh, God. Oh, it's starting to move its leg. Oh. Oh, God. These chickens should keep Monty's larder well stocked with eggs. They happily settle into their new home, and Lindsay makes a brave attempt to get to know them personally. Quite sweet, hello. With the harvest now just months away, Monty turns his attention to the old shack up in the vineyard. He's arranged for a builder to see what repairs are needed to make it habitable. 
Oh, my God. Andy came here on a holiday five years ago and realized he could make a good living from building and restoring rundown properties for lifestyle hungry Brits. Um, some rotten wood in the roof. You wouldn't want to stand on those up there, would you? John and Peter, the two local property developers, are old mates of Andy's. They've agreed to help clear the shack out. You're right, big boy. Hi, my name's Monty. Hi, Monty. Hi, nice Monty. to meet you. Hi, Andy. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Lindsay. Nice Hi, you. Lindsay. <laughs> you a brummy. I am. Why are you? Of course I am. Oh, of course. I'm yeah. sir. How yeah, about that? Wasn't it? I know. Because it's just amazing to go somewhere like this, top of a mountain, <laughs> <laughs> to meet somebody from. <laughs> Will my it's shack ever get built? It's quite extraordinary, though, don't you think? <laughs> it's absolutely amazing, isn't it? Monty had grand designs for the old shack, but he's fallen foul of local planning law. He's prohibited from turning it into his dream chateau, but he can at least make repairs and sleep over the odd night. I think once you've got the floor down and it's yeah. cleaned up, It'll yeah, be great. It will be, it'll it'll be, be really nice, nice on these summer, summer evening. Yeah, it'd be nice it'd be to perfect. sit out here in you know at night. Right, is everyone hungry? What's the dog? We are going to have my joy, huh? Andy, the Birmingham builder, is confident he can make the repairs in time for Monty's first night in the shack. Early the next morning, Lindsay is down at the allotment for her first attempt at collecting breakfast. Now stay. Stay. Oh, God, she's clapping. Oh! Oh, she's clapping again. Oh. Unfortunately, the hens aren't feeling that generous. Oh. Well, I'm actually, you know, interested to try and a fresh egg from a hen's <laughs> bottom. <laughs> this will be the first freshly laid egg Lindsay's ever tried. Go on. Oh, two. it's there. Oh, it's two little. It's a double. It's a double, double yoker. <laughs> oh, we can have half eight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a clever hen. She must have known that we would argue over that this morning. <laughs> so she wants to prevent us. The planets must be in alignment. Such an occurrence is rare. Right, let's try this egg then. Actually, that is very nice. There's definitely a difference, isn't there, between um, you know, eggs that you buy from the shop. Mm, well, there's more where that came from. After their hearty breakfast, it's up to the vineyard to make a regular inspection. The vines are vulnerable to attack by pests, but Monty's vineyard is organic. He despises anything chemical. Instead, he's depending on nature for help. The thing about um, ladybirds, they're very good at eating um, spider mites, and spider mites can ravage a vineyard. So <laughs> it's, it's free pest control. Monty believes his wine will taste better and give him a competitive edge over other local winemakers who use pesticides. So, Linz, you go think, if you look here, look. That's obviously not an organic vineyard, that one. That's a chemical vineyard. Because there's no grass or weeds or anything, yeah? Yeah. And then you see the shack, you see the green vineyard, the organic vineyard that we've got over there, yeah? Oh, right. Yeah. I mean, ours looks far more healthier, doesn't it, than that one? You cannot make a top-quality wine from a vineyard that looks like this. Um, you'll have to add acidity, because you won't have any acidity, because you've just burnt the whole area. You won't have any native yeast, either, because you've killed all the microflora in the vineyard, so you're going to have to add yeast to get it to ferment. I mean, to me, it looks like and the wine's going to taste like Their vineyard might be rich in biodiversity, but there's one disease no amount of ladybirds and cosmic forces can prevent. A fungal rot that could wipe out Monty's entire crop. But Monty has a weapon. Sulphur. I mean, every vineyard in the world uses sulphur. There's not a single vineyard that doesn't use it. 
And because it's a naturally occurring element and it doesn't leave a residue in the wine, you're allowed to use it. Everybody uses it, organic or non-organic, but it's perfectly legitimate and organic. See? This job has to be done every seven to ten days, or our man Monty won't have any grapes to harvest. But after two hours hard work, Monty's back lets him down. The doctor said, there's no way are you using a back spray. Um, but I'm obviously not telling them that I am using a back spray because uh, he go bonkers. A week later, and Monty is still out of action. Yeah, bummer, dude. I guess it's just something I've got to, you know, kind of learn to live with always. It's a bit annoying. For the first time in six months, I had to genuinely feel, you know, feel free much now. But it could all collapse in a, you know, in a couple of days. It could all just, like, those grapes that look so good at the moment could actually just turn into nothing, which, you know, it'd be a real shame. Because of the atrocious British-like weather and his bad back, Monty has no choice but to shell out 500 pounds for mechanical help. It's a cost he's about to discover he can't afford. In all budgets, you have pluses and minuses. The big plus was the fact that the mayor gave me the van, okay, for, for a euro, and then the negative was, um, was my back. And I'm then reliant on paying people big sums of money to do a job that I'd absolutely was going to do myself. And that, you know, that's a bit of a worry, because it just gives me no margin for error, you know. But help might be at hand. Right His girlfriend, Silvana, has arrived from Italy for a short break. You can if you want. <laughs> She's a successful corporate accountant. Thank heavens, Monty has no head for figures. You do take your after the ball. Invoices come in and you just, oh, yeah, pay that, pay that, pay that, pay that. And extra costs have arisen. Silvana's financial detective work reveals Monty is in dire straits. How's it looking? Not even planetary forces will make these sums add up. These prices are not very well thought, are basically invented and not checked. Yeah, I mean, looking back, I mean, I, I think I have been pretty, pretty optimistic about some of the numbers, uh, lots of the numbers. You are already in the red, that's a fact. It's a disaster, Monty. <laughs> it's, it's like that, it's really a disaster. <laughs> Next time, Monty's woes get worse. He has unwanted predators in the vineyard. A you know, wild boar coming in now would be an absolute disaster. But Monty comes up with a madcap scheme to keep them out. Don't drink it. Oh, my good God. Oh. Monty's book, Chateau Monty, which accompanies this series, is available now, priced $16.99. We're coming up next on Full Cutting Edge. With unique footage from cameras wired to the vehicle, find out what life's really like for the people at the sharp end. On call in Ambulance 212.